YouTube. You guys are not watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today we are going over the Ritual Beast deck profile. Um, this is the deck profile. I went undefeated, didn't lose a single match. If you guys want to know the whole story, it's actually on Facebook. You have to add me as a friend and then go through my wall and you can find out the whole tournament report. I do it almost about every week. Um, I really didn't have any hard matchups seeing that I 2 0 everybody. Um, I want to say my easiest matchup had to be anything that wasn't meta and then necros you know weren't that hard because it's ritual beast but ultimately let's get down to the deck profile um everything's pretty much standard from right here you're gonna play three kanahawk uh three rimpengu uh three apelio um three win or two yeah three win i apologize that's actually not standard uh three elder and to Palissa. No, I decided not to play Laura, but we'll go into that later. The last monster would be the Ritual Beast um, Pink Dolphin. Uh, for spells, uh, two Emergency Teleport, two Mystical Space Typhoon, Ritual Beast Bond, Book of Moon, Raigeki, Gold Sarcophagus, and Defy. Um, for traps, three Ritual Beast Steeds, uh, three Ambush, um, three Breakthrough Skill. Uh, two Mirror Force, Torrento, and Macro. Deck is extremely standard. Um, not really much else. I felt that I just played the best cards that Virtual Bees really had to offer. Um, and it, it worked out really well. Um, I probably, the times that I did Dead Hand, I ripped into stuff like Gold Sarcophagus or, you know, win when I needed it. Um, Rampangu actually put in a lot of work since. Um, we can send uh, Psychic Monsters from the Extra Deck to the Graveyard, whether it be uh, the Ritual Beast Polissa or even um, Gaia or Ritual Beast Ulti Gaia Paleo. Um, it could really set up for our ambush plays because obviously there's your Ritual Beast monster and it can send a tamer now. Um, that, that's just one cool thing that's going on right there. I felt that a lot of people only play two of Paleo, but I feel three is very, very mandatory. It actually saved my ass like a lot of times. Uh, my theory behind it is that, like, you you don't want to see an opening game that's fine um but more often than not there's a card that exists called denko seka and it is 1700 attack so apelio beats over denko seka um apelio gets over just a lot of awkward ass monsters um keep in mind that it's also a ritual beast monster within its name um if you go into your combos i mean he's not that bad and the later the game gets the better he gets i want to see it early and often and i also want to be able to send a ulti a paleo to the graveyard to send him and still have um others to abuse there's actually times where i've used his effect twice and then or uh rimpengu's effect twice to send two of these guys um later on down the road when everything else is sent and then it allowed me to go into just so many more combos i really like three um i feel that win at three is really really good um i main board defy i main board macro i main board macro or i'm sorry i main board defy macro and gold sarcophagus um i'm playing kanahawk i'm playing so many ways to banish cards um from my deck or from the field and i can easily abuse ritual beast tamer to special summon the backs of the field i thought that it was more it was better over palissa other than that i would have been running three palissa and two win um but mainly because it was just so easy for me to banish cards either with a paleo with kanahawk um with macro with d5 with gold Sark, and being able to recurse them would win so i decided that three was best and like i said it did never Never was a problem. I don't run Laura. Um, while Laura is another name, I just never needed another name. It, it, more often than not, when I was going through my combos, I would search like four or three times and would not need Laura, period. It, it just, I, I like her 2000 defense, but other than that, in another name, it really wasn't worth it. The reason why I'm running two Pallissa is because. Um, Sometimes you'll get Floodgate locked, your opponent activated Imperial Iron Wall, you know, just some wacky card, and you'll need an out to it. Well, if you banish Palissa, you can use Wind to special summon Palissa and then make wind up Zen Mains. Um, and if you send Wind to the graveyard, you can send Palissa to summon uh, Wind and make wind up Zen Mains. And there was actually a couple of games where I needed wind up Zen Mains um, when I was playtesting. So I felt that it was really superior to any other rank three, and I wanted to be able to make it at any time my opponent was able to Floodgate lock me. Um, the Pink Dolphin you will rarely use. Um, but when you do use it, you'll need it. It's also another name. I like to send it a lot for uh, Rimpengu's effect because it's just a card you really don't like to draw. Um, a lot of people have been running around with no emergency teleports. 
I probably wouldn't. Um, I've side decked emergency teleports out sometimes, but it's just it, it just leads you to so much more consistency to keep them in. I'd rather just keep emergency teleports in. Um, Cleave forts are a thing, and back row is uh, you know kind of a thing now. So I'd rather have a good matchup against uh, you know the Cleave Fort matchup, the Burning Abyss matchup. I mean, I'm still at locals, so people still play back row. Um, I'd rather have a good matchup against those than to lose to really, really, really dumb spells and traps that I can't get over because this deck has no spell and trap destruction other than Mystical Space Typhoon. So I thought that Mystical Space Typhoon was uh, mandatory. You should guys already know Ritual Beast Bond wins games just flat out. Um, Raigeki, Gold Sark, and Defy win games. Um, for the traps, the three steeds, three ambush, I feel like that's really standard. I've been running three Repangu since Ritual Beast. I feel that Repangu was amazing. And now since I can abuse ambush with just Repangu, it, it, it's even god tier. Um, I feel like that's mandatory to run three steeds and three ambush. You shouldn't be running anything less. Um, breakthrough skill is, oh my, God, breakthrough skill is just 50 times better than Fiendish Chain. There, this shouldn't even be a debate on who's better. Breakthrough skill is superior. Um, I was going against a Teller Knight player. And I felt so much more comfortable with Breakthrough Skill. Granted, I didn't need it because I OTK'd him and then I summoned Guy Paleo on the other time. But he would have, if he would have called it a hundred on my turn, I could have used Breakthrough Skill um, from my graveyard to negate his Deb Deneb's effect. If he would have summoned Altera on his turn, I would have negated it with Breakthrough Skill. And the double negation really, really, really pays off. And there was quite a few uh, matches where Breakthrough Skill did come through um, with the graveyard effect to negate my opponent's cards. Um, I remember my opponent went to, uh, what did he go into? Um... I was playing a bit conservative because I didn't know what he was playing against, and then he made a Gachi Gachi Gintetsu. I was like, well, that's a card. Break through skill from Graveyard, get over to Gachi Gachi Gintetsu and OTK him. He had the nuts from what I know of um, on the next turn had I not had Breakthrough Skill. That's just one of the reasons why I feel like Breakthrough Skill was just so good, um, this format. Mirror Force is godly. Uh, Torrential's godly and Macro's godly. There's not really much else to say about that. Um, I'm really liking Mirror Force this format. It has definitely came through in a lot of games. Um, I do tend to side them out for, uh, you know, just other cards um, that will help me up against the matchup. But that is it for the main deck. It sits out about 40 cards. Um, there are 18 monsters, 9 spells, and 13 traps. Um, let's get on to the extra deck. Not really much else to say about that. And I know you guys want the combo tutorial, which is... Oh my god, it's long as hell. So, let's get to the next one. Alright, Extra Deck is extremely straightforward. Um, nothing really much else to it. Uh, there is three Kanaha, uh, three uh, Ultia Paleo, two Pink Dolphin, two Gaia Ultia Paleo. That's going to sum it up for the fusions. Um, Castell, Exciting, Lightning Chidori, Wind Up Zen Mains. And Sky Calvary Centura. Um, plot twist before the tournament started, um, I was running uh, Totem Bird instead of Wind Up Zen Mains. The, my, my original theory with uh, running three Wind and three Palissa is to be able to get Totem Bird on a Necros player to prevent him from playing ritual spell cards um, and be able to consistently put pressure that way and still, you know, go, into, go throughout my plays. Well, plot twist, um, I kind of need those ritual beast monsters to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And anytime that I would be Exceed summoning, I would probably be desperately Exceed summoning to get over an opponent's, you know, cards such as, I don't know, Imperial Iron Wall. So at the last minute, I decided to drop Totem Bird for Wind Up Zen Mains. This actually isn't even my Wind Up Zen Mains, it's a friend's. I actually have one, but I didn't have it during the tournament. I feel like Zen Mains is, was superior, uh, that format. The Sky Cavalry, I never went into. I probably could drop it for a Totem Bird, which, because Totem Bird isn't really that bad. But at the same time, I feel that once I do, it's going to be that one day where I need Sky Cavalry Centuria. Um, Lightning Chidori, Excited Knight, and Castell, I did not go into either one of those. There was at a point in time against um, a Necros player, I know, it was a Necros player, that I could have made Lightning Chidori, but I'd rather just loop and go for a game. Um, as for the Ritual Beast, um, there was a time I ran out of Kana Hawks. There was a time I had one Apelia left, and then there was a time that I had one Dolphin left. Um, you pretty much use your whole extra deck when it comes to your fusions. You will abuse the Living Daylights out of them, especially if you're playing it correctly. Um, it, it, it's just so many... It's just so many combos and things that you can do now that you do have um, a psychic extra deck monster that you can send originally with Ring Pengu. And I feel like two dolphins is is it's God. I mean, at first I didn't like it, but once I realized that, you know, I can go into all my plays, do all my Connor Hawk stuff, and then I can make Rim uh Pedophil, and then you know, normal summon Palissa, special summon another ritual beast activate its effect, and that's like the safest way to go into Gaia Paleo. Um, two ritual beasts, ulti pedal fin has been like the thing. Um, 
I, I feel like three of everything else is pretty much standard. And then Ulti Guy Paleo. I mean, that card's God. Let's this you summon this card and you have more resources than your opponent, you win. There's nothing else. It's is literally our win condition. Um, now onto the side deck. Uh, again, I probably shouldn't be showing you guys the side deck because you're gonna be asking, oh, how do you side this? And I'm not gonna answer it. Um, or you guys gonna be like, blah blah blah. I mean, unless it's unless it's advice for you know what do you think would be good, then you know whatever. Um, I believe in the last video you guys actually did put out some pretty interesting things, but I feel like this one was really solid though. So let's get down to it. Is this 15? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, zero, zero. Yeah, this is 15. Um, three Artifact Lantia. This is actually MVP if I ever would have drawn it. There were so many times where I needed it but didn't draw it. Uh, two copies of Maxi. Two copies of Effect Veiler. Um, the third Mystical Space Typhoon. I actually cited this in a lot. Um, three Fairy Wind. Um, I, I, that was just completely for Cliffwork. Um, I'll actually explain it to that later. Two Steinji and Dirge. You guys should already notice. I feel that this card's godly. And two Shadow and Prison Mirrors. Okay, so my matchups were Necros. Raccoons, uh, Satellar, um, and who else did I play? I, I played another good deck. What else did I play? Well, I don't really remember right now, but I played another good deck. It's definitely down on the Facebook. Um, I cited in, I had these sides for every single deck. Oh, Yosinji. I cited in for every single deck, for the exception of Yosinji. For the Yosinji, I just cited in the third Mystical Space Typhoon and two Effect Veiler. I thought about the Fairy Winds for when they go Imperial Iron Wall and stuff, but I, you know, I, I didn't feel that fancy. Um, this sideboard pretty much covered every single basis, um, every single one of my weaknesses, or not even really every single one of my weaknesses. I don't really feel Ritual Beast um, lose to certain decks. I feel that they lose to cards like Imperial Iron Wall. So, I mean, it's always really good to have a deck that doesn't lose two decks that loses to certain cards, because then you could just side for those certain cards and you'd be, you'd be fair. Um, there was a point in time, like, if I would have seen Imperial Iron Walls um, side it for the opponent, and I know they didn't play Lanceas or Mistakes, or, you know, if they did play Mistakes or whatever, I would have sided in the Fairy Winds, but this was more specifically just for Cleefort. I felt that if I would have sided these in and activated them against a Cleefort player, I would have been able to make more advantage on the, them on top of that and just push for game, um, whatever I needed to. Steinji and Dirge, Sateller, Burning Abyss. Ironically, it's really good against Burning Abyss, but um, Sateller, uh, I already drew the nuts with, against the Sateller, so I really didn't need the Steinji and Dirge. I could take out the Steinji and Dirge just for something else because I don't feel like Sateller's is is that much of a matchup and then I could just side for like I don't know Shadow and Burning Abyss. Um I was gonna play non-fusion areas, but then I realized that Shadows will probably never be able to fuse from extra deck against me unless I have Ulti Gaia Paleo and I allow them to fuse from the extra deck against me. So um that's a thing. Um I know what you guys are probably thinking, the the maxis and effect villers and I'm main boarding the DeFi and macro. Um, it was actually really interesting. My thought process between effect villers and maxis and you know still up maining DeFi and macro, if I have macro cosmos or dimensional fissure face up on the field, I should have already won. These the maxis are to help me get into the dimensional fissure and the macro faster. The effect veilers are for necros. I mean, uh, there, there's probably a couple other decks I would side them against, but the effect veilers are for necros. It's to stop that manju. It's to slow them down because I want them to go first, and I want to see lantias and I want to see effect veilers to completely stop their first play, and then I can just set up and you know blow them out from there, um, which actually did work. I did. Uh, I think I drew the effect veiler. Um, and my opponent, he tried to do some really crazy stuff, and I was like, no. Um, my sixth card just happened to be a Ritual Beast Monster, um, and I did, you know, if had I went first, I would have bricked, so it's whatever. Um, it, I, I really feel that, about that, though. Um, I, I've never had a problem with DeFi and Macro and Effect Veiler and Maxis, uh, mainly because, like I said, if you're flipping up Macro or DeFi um, against the opponent, you probably already won. There's nothing much else with that. Ritual Bees can do that and just destroy all your opponent's monsters and banish them. Um, like I said, I really don't. I really didn't have a hard matchup. Everything else was pretty easy. I two out everybody relatively quick, um, except for the Necros player. We kind of drug it out a little bit, but um, it, it, it still wasn't even hard then. It, it, it was just, did I draw the combo? No. He dropped me down to 1,600 light points in game, Drew. Um, finally drew that last card that I needed, went off, and just, you know, completely prevented him from doing anything else. I have five back row. He didn't draw Dinko Seka. He didn't draw D Decree. Uh, thank Almighty Allah for that. But um, it was pretty much game from there. Um, I guess we can talk about combos now.
All right, guys, if you guys have watched my last video, um, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're going to go into the first combo that Ritual Beast should always have. I think this is like the the biggest combo that you guys should know. It requires you to have Elder and Kana Hawk, or, um, and, and it's very simple. So you're going to summon Elder. Elder's going to normal summon Kana Hawk. If they affect Villa, the Elder, you laugh because it's like Pollux, so whatever with that elder you're gonna banish the rimpengu okay next thing you're gonna you're gonna fuse into anything if you went second i'd probably fuse into the pink dolphin just in case you know they try to torrental you and you go ha 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 you're, you're bad at Yu-Gi-Oh. um and so you fuse into the pink dolphin and then you tag back out back into the elder and the kanahawk next thing you do you're gonna activate the kanahawk effect to grab any tamer it really doesn't matter as long as it isn't the elder um, I know some people decide to play different builds. It really doesn't, like I said, it really doesn't matter. I normally get win because if I rip this one, then yeah, it's all good. Um, then we're going to tag out into Kanahawk. Blah, 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 blah. Kanahawk's effect is going to target, um, kind of ulti Kanahawk's effect is going to target Kanahawk and win, and then we're going to chain Kanahawk's effect. Um, the regular Kanahawk is going to be sent to the graveyard, and these two monsters are going to be special summoned, and then you get to search. Your search card should always be Ambush or Steeds. It really doesn't matter because you're going to search both of them. Um, next, you're going to use Rimpengu's effect. And normally with Rimpengu, right now I'm going to banish the uh, Apaleo. And then I'm going to send uh, Apaleo to the graveyard. Keep in mind, I actually have the luxury of opening up and banishing these guys because I run three. Um, or sometimes if you guys really want to, you can do Pink Dolphin. It really doesn't matter. Um, probably, you probably would want to probably go into Pink Dolphin because, you know, drawing Pink Dolphin is worse than drawing a Paleo. But then, from there, you're going to tag out again, and you're going to Special Summon Kanahawk. Now, with that Kanahawk, you're going to send the other two, the Paleo and the Tamer, and you're going to search your second stage. Now, congratulations, you've made uh, so much advantage off of just two cards. You're gonna have your Steeds, your Ambush, and a Kanahawk on field. Um, your opponent starts doing really crazy stuff. They start setting up monsters. You activate Steeds as Chain Link 1. You see what they do. And then if they have two monsters, you just tag out the Kanahawk, Special Summon, and on Resolution, you can destroy two monsters. If you really wanna go crazy, you activate Steeds as Chain Link 1. Um, you can activate Ambush as Chain Link 2, and then Kanahawk as Chain Link 3. And then we're gonna tag Special Special, and now you get to destroy four. Um, also, always keep in mind to use a Paleo's effect as much as possible. Um, so, if you're special summoning it on ambush during your opponent's end phase, activate that Paleo to banish that ambush. Um, you're you're going to need that material to keep on making Kanahawk food. It's, it's going to be really, um, really interesting right there. Um, I wish there were more combos. Like That's really the basic combos. I think all of the other combos are practically um, in-game combos. Like there, There's a whole bunch of gimmicky stuff that I could do. But, I mean, that requires so much setup that the deck does set up initially on his own. Um, it's so easy to OTK with OTK the opponent if they left themselves wide open, which means if they only summon monsters, um, why Necros is really an easy, interesting matchup for us. Um, and if everything else. I think I'm just going to stop with the Elder Kanahawk play. And if you guys really want to watch some more uh, of the, the Ritual Beast combos, um, you'd have to watch my other video or just really just play the deck because it's like I said It's so many just in-depth and in intricate combos, but they don't really start off with a certain setup if you ask me um, It's just you know, you go as you play, but thank you guys for watching another segment of the Cali effect Please like comment subscribe, but most of all enjoy